Welcome to Gadgets for Families, the tech podcast for all those who have had some version of the following conversation. I have a weird charge on my credit card. What is it? Insert name of streaming service. Did you subscribe? (laughs) Well, I signed up for a free trial, so it should be free, right? Yeah, just shake your head, right? (laughs) And so it's for those of you that have been on either side of that conversation and all those that have learned to check their credit card or bank statements regularly to see what subscriptions they forgot about. Right, because they'll never forget. You will forget. They won't forget. No. Or anyone else looking to get more out of their life through their technology. I'm your host, Greg Cunningham. And I'm your host, Jason Benjamin. Thank you guys for joining us on episode 26. 26. Now, Jason, I thought of this episode last week and immediately I had a title in mind. And I sent Jason just the title and we'll see if we end up with this. But don't cross the streams. Right? Perfect. 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 I have a question for you, Jason, because you seem like the kind of person that's unafraid to do so, to cross the streams, considering that a few weeks ago you recorded a trailer and you mixed all kinds of universes in that one trailer. So have you ever crossed the streams, Jason? Well, by crossing the streams, if you mean jumping from stream to stream to find exactly what I want to watch, then yes. I do that on a nightly basis sometimes. When I have time to watch, I I do. All right. Well, so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to dive into a little bit of streaming stuff. We're going to talk about um, the state of streaming today because it is different from what we used to grow up with. Well, maybe we'll talk about kids when they see commercials and they go, Dad, what's that? Right. Yeah. My kids had a hard time with that. Seeing those commercials, they, 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 they don't deal with it very well. No. So we'll talk about the state of streaming services today. We're going to talk about which services we use and which we pay for. And there will be some pro tips that come out of that when we talk about which ones we which ones we pay for and which ones we don't. Um, and then I have a really big question I'll ask Jason at the end. Uh, I skipped something, though. We're going to talk about what devices we use to stream on. So because that's just yeah. as important as what services. And then we'll do some wrap up with some suggestions and some tips and If you're interested to know not only how, but what we're watching, stick around for the post show. We're just going to have a nice, easy, fun post show conversation and talk about what we've been watching lately, what's on our list to watch. I know Jason has a list because he and I aren't aren't allowed to talk about certain shows until he binge watches the whole season. And there, right. he's and like several. Sh- he's several <laughs> shows behind right now. So I am running way behind. Yeah. Now, before we get into any of that, just a reminder to subscribe, follow, share the podcast. Hopefully, last week you took advantage of some of the tips that we put out there. We had stocking stuffers, tips on tech things for mom, dad, kids, others, and then we had some tips on what to do and what to avoid. Um, doing that. So check out the YouTube channel. Just search for Gadgets for Families. The playlist of every episode goes up there. We have the full episode. We have the individual segments if you don't want to sit around and watch something quite that long. And last week I recorded on location. So if you didn't catch that, uh, I did put a picture of my setup in in one of our Instagram posts. So you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. I'm not calling it X, it's Twitter. And all of those, uh, (laughs) those different things. So do all of the things. Jason, what was the best part of last week? I'll just call it that. Whether it was the holiday or something else you did, what was the best part of last week? Right, right. Because it all kind of ran together, for me at least. So no time off for me. I I hit the ground running right after we recorded last week and uh, stayed pretty steadily busy up until... um, Hmm. Up until Sunday. So we have a contractor that's been working with us, right? We have a couple of them. Um, I would say the best part was she actually volunteered to work one of my markets. So she covered for me at uh, uh, one, of my, one of my events. And uh, me and the wife got to take some time together to go out. We had lunch together and we did some, some holiday shopping and stuff. So it didn't really land anything Black Friday, but we found some pretty good deals and things like that. So that was, a, that was the best time, spending some time with her. 
away from the kids, away from the job, away from, you know. Yeah. Yeah, for you? me. What was the best part? You know, I to- I was telling you this story. So Sunday, we had told the grandkids that we were going to set up all the Christmas decorations. I have a pretty extensive village. In fact, we've had to stop right. getting pieces for my village <laughs> because I have right. so many. But also, if I think about moving into an RV, they can't come with yeah, us. Yeah, you can't take them with you. So uh, I'm, the, I'm the reverse of that right now. I'm buying everything that fits in my village. I'm nice. buying it. I'm buying it. So eventually, I'll get to a point like you where I'm like, I have to stop buying these things. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so we had told them we were going to do that, but I actually wasn't feeling great. And so I told the oldest granddaughter, I said, hey, if you guys set up the Christmas tree, can we set up the village another day? Because I wasn't feeling great. But then by the time I got home and pulled out the Christmas tree stuff so that they could do it, I decided to just do it. And it turned out to be a great afternoon. The kids were just right. over the moon and, and so excited and um, you know all of that kind of stuff. So that was probably the best part of last week for me. And yesterday, um, I spent, I don't know, like two hours sitting on the couch. I decided not to take the couch out of the room this year. Normally I have to, to fit everything, but it, but I crammed it all in so I could have the couch. And so I sat on the couch and was reading a book surrounded by the Christmas lights and the village and stuff like that for a couple hours. And that was really, really restful for me. And so that was great. But I was asking, I asked my granddaughter what her favorite parts of the village were, and she was talking about them. And then she asked me the same thing. And one of the things that dawned on me is one of the pieces that I have is the house and a little fence that goes around it and the flagpole Mm -hmm. from a Christmas story. Okay. And so I have that one set up. That one's on the piano with a couple of other pieces, but that one, um, that was my mom's favorite Christmas movie, Ralphie, the pink nightmare. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so she uh, that just reminded me of that. And so, yeah, it's going to be a different Christmas, but I was grateful to get that stuff up, help me kind of get yeah. feeling better and doing that. So that was the best part for me. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of, you know, when you like you say, you sat in there, you read the book and all of that. It's kind of almost like a time machine. Right. I mean, you're yeah. physically not moving, but man, you just remember so many different points in your life by seeing certain, you know, items like that you know certain things like that it'll take you back to when you were 15 and when you were seven and when you were 23 and when you were 29 you know all within the same room you know just just being around uh uh you know certain things like that so i'm with you i'm with you that is a a really fun uh, outlet to what i really need is a hot tub surrounded by all of that that would be (laughs) ideal especially where so yeah, if you watch last week's episode, you can see I was in a hoodie um, and was yeah. just fine. And I got in a ton of bike riding. And Saturday when we came home, I hadn't driven even an hour. And I was in the middle of ice and snow. Yeah. So yeah, that was kind of a tragedy. So so uh, I have a follow-up question for you, though, before I go into our tips for this this uh, this week. Yeah. Did you get... <clears throat> any of the items we had on our list from last week and you can just say yes or no and not say which if you don't want to spoil somebody's surprise but did you take your own advice and hit something on one of our lists from last week so i didn't not yet because i'm kind of reconsidering a couple of things but the hand warmers that's that's a no-brainer that's going to be in everyone's stocking so i don't think uh I don't think I'm uh, you know, spoiling any surprise with that. Um, I tested some out uh, that I I got uh, a few weeks ago. It was like end of summer, so of course they were on sale because no one needed hand warmers then, and uh, they were a really good pair for like ten bucks or nine bucks or something like that. And uh, I used them the other day because it's cold enough in Houston at sixty nine, seventy degrees. I need those hand <laughs> I know Greg shakes his hand every time I say something like that, but I use them. No brainer. They're going in everyone's stocking. So uh check those out, guys. If you if you didn't pick any up on Black Friday or Cyber Monday, they're gonna be on sale between now and Christmas. So just look at those hand warmers. So for me, I had you? yeah, I got I'll have three of our gifts this year will be prints. You know how I talked about using a service to print stuff right, up. Right. I mean, this was this was a tough year for a lot of the family, right? With with the mm-hmm. different funerals and stuff we had. So 
I ended up ordering a couple more prints. Um, and those are still good. I'm getting them next week. So if you're okay. looking to use a service like that, you're still in the window where you can do it. So, uh, I so did was that. it the Black Friday deal? No, well, or, or did you get it? So I'm using for these. I'm using uh, Easy Canvas prints, and okay. yeah, I mean they had like 93 percent off, but they almost always they're kind of like slick wraps, right? Where they're yeah. almost almost yeah. always you order seems to be once some. And they... Yeah, yeah. They'll send you a coupon yeah. code, right? And I got with one of the orders that I did because I chose the economy shipping. I got uh, a free, a free print that I can redeem in January. Okay. So um, I have an idea of what you know I'm what you do. want. Yeah. Okay. Good. good. Yeah, and so I know what I'm going to do with that. So that's pretty cool. Um, so definitely still have time to take advantage of those. And I did notice on one of the services that I was on. Remember, I mentioned this. Boba Fett up here last week about the metal prints. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the services actually does these metal prints and you can do them custom too. So okay. um, that was pretty cool. But then I also, uh, I sent you this. I don't know if you took advantage of it, but I did take advantage of the anchor sale that was going on and got that little soda can double charger. So, right. um, cause right. that's, what's going to go in the trailer. Um, so. But I don't, you know, I don't know if the thumbs up came up on the. It did. I still hadn't found that setting. Okay. Yeah. See, I I, I, yeah, I left really mine on. Video. So here you go. So here's the. Let's see. Right. There we go. Oh right. yeah, I got the explosions and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So that was that was a good tip. That was another one you sent too that we really I really pushed for, but my wife was like, no, because. Uh, it was the, the Game Boy, like the retro one. Oh, the wallet. The, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So the car kind of hangs out like halfway. Yeah. And that was a no go for her. But yeah, it was for my son. And uh I I remember replying back, like, I can't find the price. It's not showing me the price. It was linking me to some other products that the uh, company sold. So um, but when I got to my iPad and opened it up and whatever, we talked about it, but yeah, I don't know. So you used those before, right? Where you, you have the card, the little wallet on, on the back. Yeah. I thought they all like kind of stuck out the top because that makes it easy to pull it out. They but, do. Cause otherwise you can't get them out. Right. right? So right. even on the wallet you and I have, they stick out part of the yeah. way. Yeah. So yeah. they all do that. So if you really want super secure, you're going to have to get something that folds over the back. So, and that's what she found and it kind of like clasps, it kind of locks in yeah. there and it kind of, and that's what Karen's does. Like Karen's is like okay, that so too. The one. Yeah. We tried the others. So I tried the others. She tried the others. The problem with them was they didn't stay on the phone well enough with a case on it. Right. And so she ended up with an all-in-one. So it's a case and then it's got the flap and you fold the flap open and it's got the spot for stuff. So nothing's sticking, nothing's sticking out on hers. Okay. That's what she ended up wanting to go with. So, so in, in her idea too, was he can fold cash or whatever and kind of just stick it in there and just close it, close it yeah. shut or whatever. So, I was out was for it, but I got vetoed on that. I, I really liked that. That was a really cool find that you said. Um, we should add it in the show notes. So it's a it's a retro Game Boy case with a phone, and it has a wallet, like yeah. a, a thing in the back. Really cool sock and stuff or gift idea. Uh, we'll, we'll add it to the show notes so you guys can check it out. But I think that was a really good find. Well, let's go dive into our tips. I think you added one here, right? So what was your tip yeah. for... Um, so what's your tip for this? To, so since we're talking about streaming services and things like that, um, look out for, you know, these promos and these credits when you're buying a new gadget, right? So I bought a new TV, uh, uh last year and with that, it came with a $90 streaming credit, right? Um, I wasted it on Showtime uh, of all things when I should have got sling because you told, we talked you talked to me about Sling a few times before. That was one of the options. I don't know. I, I went with Showtime, didn't watch it once, right? So 90, 90 bucks, I think we had it for about three or four months. And and I probably watched it like that first evening and didn't watch it again until, you know, and, and it expired. So look out for those promos. You know, you buy a new TV, you buy a new uh, streaming box, um, you know, certain places, I don't think from Apple, but, you know, you buy it from Best Buy or something like that. They may give you, uh, you know, three months free of Apple TV or or something like that. So 
just look out for those and it may help you determine whether or not you want an item, right? If there's two uh, uh, compar comparably, uh, you know, equal TVs, you know, buy the one that has the promo, you know, yeah. buy the one that's giving you three months of HBO for free or three months of Netflix for free or something like that. So always look out for these promotions just to sweeten a deal whenever you're buying a new gadget or something like that. Um, so I know with Apple gadgets, when you buy something, you get the uh, the three months of Apple Plus. I mean, not Apple Plus, uh, music, Apple Music. Yeah, music uh, or TV workout, Plus, depending on what plus. you're buying. Yeah. Right, right. Fitness Plus and things like that. So you always get those promotions. But, you know, let's say if you get it from Best Buy, something they give you, you know, 90 days or something like that. You know, just go with uh, just keep an eye out for those. So yep. that's my tip for this week. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, you know, today we're going to talk about video streaming. I didn't even think about right. putting in the whether we're using because I can't just like you can't believe I use some of the apps that aren't default Apple apps. I can't believe you right. still use Pandora to stream. Right, music. right. It's because so. it's set the, exactly the way it, it just gives me the music that I want. I just don't have the time to go through Spotify and, and find all of that. I've tried, but I always default back to Pandora. Yeah. <laughs> Jason can easily be fed by an algorithm, not by Apple's yeah. human curation. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It just gets me. <laughs> so, my tip is is something you'd want to pay attention to if you're going to do a lot of streaming. And so, last week, because um, I do all the show publication, I did the editing, mm -hmm. and then I was a little concerned about the uploads because I was on a hot spot or tethered to my iPhone, which is what I ended up doing for part of this, and. This just reminded me of a couple of things that you and I used to talk to people about when they were talking about getting home internet or when they were going to work remotely. And mm -hmm. almost always the focus is on speed, right? How fast right. is the internet? And now this used to be a much bigger deal back in the day when you had DSL and cable internet. And right. now if you get fiber, you're probably golden. But it isn't just about speeds because I had reasonable speeds on both my hotspot and tethering to my iPhone. Right. In fact, when I was able to cable connect my iPhone to my Mac, I was getting like 19 up, right? Which is okay. pretty, pretty darn yeah, good. I mean, it's not my that's gig. really good. It's not the gig fiber that I have here right, at the house, right. right? But that is really good for cellular. Yeah. Right. But here's the problem. The problem is that with any sort of connection like that, any of those cellular connections, it's the consistency and the stability that's the issue. Right. Mm -hmm. So they don't maintain those speeds all the time, or they may drop just enough that it pauses everything. And so, you know, I was having issues and I ended up stopping uploading the big episode. And we actually uploaded at a lower quality last week on purpose because I knew I was going right. to have these struggles. But I stopped uploading the big episode and connected to my phone, and I was able to get all of the segments up very, very, mm -hmm. very quickly. And then I restarted uploading the full video episode to the YouTube channel. And it was going to take three or four hours. Right. And it ended up taking uh, like 10. Wow. wow. Okay. <laughs> but it said it was going to be three or four hours and it started to make progress. And I ended up leaving it overnight, which was fine. And normally we get everything published at like midnight. So everything shows up in everybody's feeds on that day, but it didn't show up till five o'clock. And that's just, it's that consistency and that stability, right? Yeah. It's the connection doesn't stay at those, doesn't maintain those speeds. Whereas if you have a fiber connection, for example, or it used to be cable internet in the day, those things were much more stable and whatever speed you were getting, you were going to get cons consistently. And you didn't have to worry about the neighbors drawing down some of the bandwidth and stuff like that. Right. So right. that's just my tip. Uh, if you're going to work from home or if you're going to do any heavy internet stuff or those kinds of things, don't just look at the speed. Make sure you're paying attention to stability. Uh, we've been having problems with our church Wi-Fi network um, lately, and it you know, makes it more difficult to have a good experience on uh, the Zoom stuff that we do for church. But right. think about that. Don't just look at the speeds. Yes, speeds are important, but if you could get high-speed broadband, you don't need to have gig like I have, but if you could mm -hmm. get a good solid connection that stays at same consistent speed, you're going to be fine on any of the streaming services that we're going to talk about today. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good tip. So I wonder what the church stuff, um, the streaming stuff, uh, is it, are they sharing that network with anything or no, they're actually using so dedicated. 
Yeah, they're using the same provider I do at home, but they don't okay. have. I don't think they have the fiber, so okay. they've just got okay. the cable internet the cable. version or whatever it is, right? And I actually don't think it's a problem with um, with that. I think something's going on in the network itself, yeah. and you know, church stuff. It's a bunch of volunteers monitoring and right. trying to deal with this stuff, right? So, anyway, is what it is. But yeah. but yeah. So if you're looking for internet, again, speed is good, but you want consistency. And this is going to be a big deal for me. If I start trying to publish more, I'm going to need a more consistent um, service because I can't have an episode take 10 hours to upload to um, YouTube. And my guess is it started and stopped multiple times because when I finally got done, I mean, I only had maybe 8 to 10 gigs of video to upload. Mm-hmm. and it consumed 30. Wow. So, yeah. 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 So. Well, yeah, that, right. that is something good, something good to think about. Yeah. Because it's not all about speed sometimes, especially when we get into talking about streaming services and stuff like that. It's, yeah. I mean, I'd rather have a consistent, you know, 10 to 15 down and three to five up constant versus mm-hmm. sometimes get 30 and sometimes get zero. Right. I mean, that's it's just a much better, much better experience. And all of these services are set to buffer things in anyway. So you're starting to play it and it's already buffering in everything. Right. right. So on certain devices, like you said, we, we we need to talk about the devices. But, yeah, certain devices are better at it than than others. And I've used quite a few. Different types of devices. So and, you know, I can kind of give my opinion on which ones work better than and which other. Yeah, we're going to get into that because I think it'll be interesting when we talk about devices to hear you because I think you're more diverse than I am. For sure you are. So mm-hmm. um, so let's let's start in. Let's talk about – let's cross the streams. There's my reference yeah. again, right? Let's cross the streams and let's talk about some of these streaming stuff. So, Jason, this is not your dad's streaming service, right? Or the no, state of streaming no. today? No, not at all. And not even what we started with. A few years ago, back when when streaming was, you know, in its in its infancy, I guess you can say it's still it's still in its in its early stages now. You know, we hadn't reached the, the golden era, but it's uh it's still pretty new to a lot of people. You know, uh, even though it's small growth, but when they do their, you know, they talk about their their earnings and stuff like that, all of them pretty much still have at least tiny bit of growth. So. There's still new customers every day to all of these services and not just someone switching from Netflix to to Hulu or from, you know what I mean? These are new customers uh, on their platforms. And um, yeah, yeah. So someone's discovering these new services every day. So it's still new to someone. But, you know, if I think about. There was really no streaming services then. Yeah. Right? It was either just straight downloads. You know, you download what you wanted to see. You You could rent a movie. Um, put it in the VCR, you know, I say rent <laughs> beta right, or right. VHS format. Make sure you get the right, right version with the right player. Nobody right. that listens and to this show knows what we're talking about. No, no, going to a video store. They they've heard of Blockbuster because you see all the hipsters wearing the Blockbuster shirts, but they don't know about the little mom and pop video store down you know down right. at the end of the block. And and uh, yeah, you can go in and just rent a movie. What like a year or so after it left the theater, right? There was yeah. no like ninety days after it, you know, or still in the dollar the dollar cinema, and you could still rent it at home, or it released in the movies, and you can get it on HBO Go like the next week or something like that. It was none of that. The movie left the theater. You had to wait a year, and you can get a VHS a VHS tape and bring it home and watch it. So, but, and you'd walk <laughs> in the store, right? And they'd have all the new releases on one wall. And they'd right. have like 20 copies of each one. Right. And if all you saw was the the little placard thing that they used to tell you where it was and no no tape behind it, you were out of luck, right? This is yeah, not where any, 5 million people could rent it at the same time. So Yeah. And then the guy, the clerk, he'll bang away on the keyboard. Like, oh, I have one due back in three days. You can come back in three days. I may have it and I may yeah. not. You know, or, or uh, take a look and somebody's returning one today, but it's already two days late, so they may not be returning it. So, <laughs> and let me put you on the waiting list, that kind of stuff, too. Right, right. right. 
So I, th I think it's interesting that when the streaming stuff started, it, we started having this conversation about cord cutting, right? And everybody thought, mm -hmm. it's ridiculous how much I have to pay the cable companies because they had a monopoly on right. this stuff, right? I mean, they really did. They did. You didn't have a whole and lot of choices. they're still clawing for it now, buying yeah. up these streaming services and stuff. They're yep. still clawing to try to keep control of it. But you'd pay 100 or so bucks and you'd get four gazillion channels, right? More than right. you would ever, 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 ever watch right. and then the the concept behind streaming was that well i only pay for what i want right. and that lasted for like two microseconds and then everybody decided that they needed their own streaming service and so every right. channel every network everybody decided no i'm going to have my own service it's not getting bundled with anybody else and so, you know, at this point, if you were to subscribe to enough of these things, you're not saving any money, right? right? I mean, you're really not if you had to pay for all of these things. And so I think that whole concept of it's cheaper to cord cut, it actually works for me. And I'll explain why when we go through what I'm doing. But I think for a lot of people, they've just ended up paying $90 for YouTube TV or mm -hmm. Verbo or whatever, you know, whatever the... TV streaming services are, and then they're right. still paying $10 here and $10 there and $10 here for all of these other video streaming services. And so are we saving any money? No, probably not. Um, no. So, and, and the companies, the ISPs were smart about it, right? They knew, they saw it coming. They knew what people were doing. They're like, okay, if, we, if you're going to cut the cord, if you're not going to pay for our cable, we're going to raise the price on the internet. Yeah, we're gonna give you better internet because, like I say, my neighborhood improved. They gave us better internet, but also the price came with it. So they raised the price on the internet. The internet is actually more expensive than it used to be. You know, they have more promos and stuff like that. Longer promos, I say. They always had the introductory rate for six months or well, whatever it was, but now it's like a year. So now yeah. you get the introductory price for like a year, but the next few years that you're on it, yeah, you're gonna be paying a premium for it. Yeah, and with the streaming, of course, you need unlimited, right? Yeah. My family, we stream everything. So being on the base plan wasn't enough for us. We were consistently going over, and they would charge like $30 for, um, I think it was like a gigabyte or something yeah. like that. So we were getting bills that were more so than if we would pay if we were paying for the, the you know, the cable yeah. service and stuff. So, yeah. I know they, my, they uh, up. my sister and her family, I think they go through Comcast. And mm -hmm. every summer they have to up their yeah. thing because there's a data cap, yeah. right? It's like a terabyte yeah. of data or whatever the case may be, which we would think, oh, that's ridiculous. But when you think of uh, a two-hour movie 4K resolution, yeah. I mean, you're talking tens of gigabytes of stuff and how often you do that. So I know they have to up that every summer. Um, for whatever reason, my provider, there's no data cap. So I've got gig fiber. Okay no data cap. I only pay 90 bucks a month. And, okay. um, and it's funny because that is actually only slightly more expensive than like the 256 megabyte speed stuff. So, I mean, it just made so much sense for me to do this. So yeah, right. there are some adjustments there and, and some other things that have come out of this that I think are good. One is all the free trials that you can get and all of the free stuff like you were talking about earlier, right? You just need to be aware, and this is why I was joking around at the beginning of somebody saying, I've got a weird charge on my credit card for this free service. <laughs> yeah, you get these free things, but nine times out of 10, they're either you're doing it through your Apple ID or you're being asked to put in a credit card and you get two weeks free. And if you don't cancel 24 hours before the end of the two weeks, then right. you're automatically going to get charged. And then they all auto renew, right? I mean, they just renew and renew and renew and renew until you stop them. So that's one of the things that's come out of this, but you can stream together. I mean, if I were to do, if I really wanted to, with all the devices I have in my house, I could probably never pay for Apple services, right? As often as mm -hmm. I'm buying headphones or phones or tablets or whatever the case may yep. be. Right. But then the other good thing that's come out of this, which you could not do with cable, right? I mean, you were stuck with cable. You either had to move out of the service area and then they would let you cancel or you were stuck with that for two years or whatever the case may be. And right. that's this concept of canceling and restarting 
as needed. And I'll talk about this with one of my service, actually with two or three of my services. Jason, I know you do this too. So that's been a positive thing that has come out of all of this is that most of these services, they are not locking you in to a one-year or a two-year contract. It's not like your old cell phone carrier. So right. if I want to watch it right now, I do. And if uh, so, you know, here's Jason, the binge guy. He has to wait for a whole season to come down. So he doesn't yeah. need to have one of these services for three months. He can wait for the season to be done, pay for it for a month, because you do have to do a month at a time. Most of them won't go any right. lower than that. Pay for it for a single month and get everything binge watched in that month and turn it back off. Yep. If you have the time or you'll waste a whole month like I did with my Paramount Plus earlier this year. <laughs> right after after uh, Strange New Worlds finished, I paid for the month. Never got a chance to watch that or Picard. <laughs> Uh, and Picard, I've got to say, well, we can talk about those at some point, but and they're not on my list for today because they're done. But Picard, the end of Picard was really, really good. So, right. so right. many classics came back in that. It was fantastic because it was basically a next generation reunion. So, yes. All right. So that's kind of the state of streaming services today. Let's start with, and Jason, we'll go with you first. What services we use? And as you talk about them, Talk about how you get them. Do you pay for them? Do you get them as part of a promo? You know, talk about that part of it too. I should start with two uh, saying I'm one of those OG cord cutters, right? Back when we what was it 2009 or something when we kept when that term first started getting thrown around was this cord cutting, right? I hadn't paid for cable like and and forever, right? So I've been on Netflix, and that's my number one here. I've been on Netflix since Netflix started with the uh, with the with the streaming services. Now, I believe we switched accounts at some point. Um, I, I don't remember why, but uh, I, I'm I'm an OG Netflixer, OG uh, cord cutter. So always just pay for internet, never cable, never phone service, never uh, uh, security, uh, harm, home alarm, none of that. Always just internet and uh, I'll get into some of the pitfalls in that, uh, you know, in the post show when we talk about it. But so Netflix, of course, uh, is my number one. And do you pay uh, for that one then? It. Yes, we, we pay for that one. That okay. one's auto renews uh, right out of the account, just like the light bill. So there's there's the necessities, the light bill, the water bill, and Netflix. That's one of the ones that does it. That one and my second one, which is Amazon Prime. Now, Amazon Prime has really been annoying me with the, what is it? Not to be, what is that? Freebie or freebie or, or whatever it is. I don't like how everything's jumbled together now. So you're watching something and you think that it's included in Prime, and all of a sudden they hit you with two minutes worth of ads. And I'm like, wait, I thought this was part of Prime. So that's really been annoying me. And I know they do it on purpose, but you know, hey, that that comes with it. So Prime is one, mostly for the benefits of Prime, right? right. The shipping and stuff like that. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Being, not to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt you, but freebie. No. There's a lot of good stuff if you're willing to deal right. with the commercials. But I ads. agree with you. It'd be nice if it wasn't if you knew what you were getting right up front. And I'll talk about right. when we go to a, one of mine. I'll talk about how they handle some of the ads and stuff, which I thought was genius. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If there was a way I could filter that and not watch it, because you're right. I'm a big horror movie fan, and man, they have tons of really good old school horror movies. But I just can't deal with the ads sometimes, you know. It's it's just annoying. So yeah, if I can filter those and watch them when I want, uh, I would love that more. So, but mainly because of the shipping perks and stuff like that, I, we Prime is another one that auto auto bills every month. We make sure we have it. It's it's great. If it wasn't Amazon Prime shipping, would you still pay for Amazon Prime Video? No. Not on a not on a monthly basis like I do. Okay. Right. I would I would do whatever promotions come up, Prime Day deal. Hey, you can get Prime for three months for whatever. Um, I would jump on it then if if they didn't have the shipping. The okay. shipping is my main focus. You know, with me being in Houston, I'm literally like surrounded by two really big Amazon warehouses. Some stuff I order it'll say two day shipping and it'll be here the same day. It, it's 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 crazy. I'm I'm really spoiled living in Houston. So I know maybe some of our listeners don't have that that same thing because I think Prime is three days in some locations, right? It's yeah. not just the two day shipping. It's, Most it's of mine's next days. day or two day. Okay, 
All so right. and there's a warehouse in Salt Lake, I'm sure. So okay, yeah, they they'll drive it for some reason. You're anti driving 45 minutes now. I don't know what what the deal with you. <laughs> what the deal is with Greg Cunningham now? But yeah, they'll they'll drive it to you, Greg. Don't worry, you don't have to drive 30 minutes in the truck anymore. Sweet. So my next one is Paramount Plus. Now this is one I, I mentioned earlier. I pay for it when I want. Right, I wait for a season to finish, whether it be South Park. Uh, uh, my Star Treks that I watch, uh, some mystery show or, or, or you know, uh, one of those crime dramas that my wife and I love, love to watch. We'll wait for the season to finish. I'll pay for it for a month or two, and then we'll we'll go through it. So not the whole year, but Paramount Plus is one that I use. So Hulu and Disney, never the ESPN. I, I just, you know, I, I watch football. Uh, I watch baseball uh, when, when I can, but uh, never have the need to pay for ESPN. So uh, we'll do Hulu and we'll do Disney. And it's like a summertime thing, right? Kids are going to be home from school. They're going to be uh, on winter break or something like that, especially Disney Plus on winter break, right? Because that's when they have the the, the really big specials and, and stuff like that. So that maybe, you know, two times a year or something, we'll do Hulu and um, and Disney Plus. But that, that's pretty much it. So I have HBO or Max or HBO Go or whatever they call it. But we talked about how the carriers are trying to, you know, the ISPs are trying to maintain their, their control over it. So this was weird. It's actually cheaper with this bundle, with the HBO Max and my internet service and the unlimited. They make it cheaper to get that package than they do just paying for just the internet, right? So they figured out a way or uh, whatever. So I'm, I'm hooked into HBO Max. It's good every now and then to find a documentary or something that I like to watch. They do have the new movies that come out. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes they're still in the theater and they're on they're on Mac. So if there's something that I want to see, so I do tune in from time to time. But it's not as active in my in my household as uh, as some of the other stuff. So, but and that's pretty much it for me. Every now and then I'll get a trial. Like I said, when I bought the TV, I had the ninety dollar streaming credit. I can pick from a number of different services. Somehow I pick Showtime. <laughs> it didn't get watched. Uh, we'll do Apple TV. I still to this day hadn't found anything that I like to watch on Apple TV. I know you recommended a few things. I'm going to give you one in the post that... show. So I'm okay. going to give you one in the post show you may want to check out. Okay. I've let trials go to waste, of course, when we buy our new phones and, and things like that. And I'll get the trial. I'll turn it on and I'll never watch it. This last trial. I turned it on and I told my wife, hey, we got another three month trial or whatever. And she she found something that she watched, didn't watch it at all. So I'll do trials or new things here and there. But pretty much uh, Amazon, uh, Netflix, HBO Max every now and then, Paramount from time to time and Disney Plus on holidays and, and winter breaks. So. so how about you? I see we have some overlap. Yeah, I see you have some on your list, but are some actively more active you know actually more active than others yeah i mean you mentioned about cable and stuff like that so karen and i have only had cable once in our life that we paid for okay and i remember what, what apartment we were living in and and uh and that was back in the day when you'd cancel it and then it would take them like six months to actually turn it right. off too right so we have to send somebody out to come and yeah. switch the box or something the little terminal in the backyard or in the back of the complex yeah. or whatever yeah so we've never really had any of that stuff. So, but we have several services now. Um, Disney Plus, I get the bundle through Verizon for free. So I get Disney Plus, okay. I get Hulu and ESPN Plus. I use ESPN Plus for video on occasion because mm -hmm. I'm in a smaller market, right? So, I mean, next year it might be different when Utah moves to the Big 12. But um, right. by the way, they're coming to play Houston. So just thought I'd point that out. Um, yep. Play might be a, a, a an extreme word in that circumstance. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, but. they're coming to stand in the stadium with him. Uh huh. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> um, for basketball, it won't even be close. I don't think fo or I don't think Houston will hang with Utah from a football standpoint. Yeah. But we'll see. Dustin already asked me if I was going to come down and watch, so that's on my list. Uh, so anyway, so I get that bundle, and I do get it free through Verizon. So, but we watch okay. so all three, not yeah. just one. You get it's all the three, bundle. That, that one bundle. Yep. Nice. Yep. And um, 
Disney Plus is, I put these in order, kind of in order, but Disney Plus is absolutely the one that gets watched the most. I mean, the kids watch everything on it, PJ Masks and Bluey and um, right. Blue's Clues and, you know, just all kinds of stuff on there. Plus, they're watching all the Disney shows. And there's the thing, and I'm surprised that Disney's this low on your list because Disney owns all the universes except right. for the DC right. universe. Right, which then you have a Netflix has to take care of that, but all of the rest of the universes Disney owns. So, yeah, yeah. yeah so that one's number one. Uh, Amazon Prime, that's part of my Prime subscription. Um, we do it because of the shipping for sure. We absolutely Definitely. get enough benefit out of that to to pay for it. I don't know. I asked you, right, if you would pay for this if it wasn't part of it. I think it would depend on the price for me because I actually use it more than I. Um, than I thought I would. And I watch a lot of the freebie stuff, a lot of it. And I'll okay. talk about a couple of those shows in the post show. But um, mm -hmm. so I think I probably would pay for this one if I had to. Okay. So. Apple TV plus is next on the list just because I've had it for since it came out as part of the subscription. And it's really there. It and Apple news are the ones that I would probably say I use the least, but why it, mm -hmm was a huge Ted Lasso fan, right? I mean, he's a soccer nut. So, yeah. you know, he watched Ted Lasso a ton and he's watched stuff on it, but I have started watching one show. Here's my problem. You know how conservative I am about media that I consume, mm -hmm. right? And I was hopeful that Apple would pull some of their, you know, the way they manage content and stuff in the app store and the types of apps and stuff you can have. Yeah. I was hoping that there would be more of that in the Apple TV plus service. And no, they just went all out. Yeah. I mean, the first shows they released were C with Jason Momoa, which is one mm -hmm. of the most violent shows from what people have told me. I have not watched it because of the reputation that it had. And then the morning show, which was language like crazy. Yeah. And it's just stuff that I don't do fine for everybody else, but I just don't do that kind of stuff. And so I've just had a hard time finding shows on there that I wanted to watch because I'd be watching the show and all of a sudden there'd be something in it. And I'm like, oh, why it doesn't need to be there. Yeah. And cause right. there were a whole bunch of intriguing <laughs> shows, but there is one that so far has been pretty good and I'm hoping they don't spoil it. I'll talk about it in the post show. Cause I think you might like it too. So that okay. one's there. Um, the chosen is, I know this is a TV series or a series, right? This is, Mm -hmm. about the life of Jesus Christ. And it's a uh, angel studios was the one that did it. They're also the one that did sound of freedom. By the way, if you haven't seen the movie sound of freedom, you need to see that movie to understand what's going on in the world today with child trafficking and stuff like that. That was an amazing yeah. show. I don't want to see it again because yeah. it was that kind of a movie, but anyway, so this, they've got their own app and it was horrible when I first downloaded it. And now it's gotten much, much better. You couldn't even like skip through stuff. It was just, it was nuts. But anyway, so I have that one. Um, the church I'm in, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, they have a whole bunch of streaming stuff. They have the Tabernacle Choir and, you know, a bunch of that kind of stuff. They have a bunch of streaming mm -hmm. stuff in there. So those are kind of niche ones. Is it a subscription or is it, nope. is it just, you just, you have your login and you log in and you can watch it? You actually don't even need the login. They've got an app called... I can't remember. It's They just changed it. It's called Stream or something like that. It's on the TV. It's on the devices, all that kind of stuff. And it's just all okay. of their content. It pulls all their YouTube stuff. They've got their YouTube channels and stuff like that, too. So it's not really okay. a subscription. It's just a streaming thing. So Okay. Um, now, Paramount Plus and Peacock, Wyatt pays for both of these. Um, and he pays for them mostly because they have soccer. <laughs> the yeah. European soccer. Uh, as Wyatt puts it, soccer is better everywhere else except for the U.S. So, um, <laughs> right. so he pays for those two. Um, and the Paramount one, we actually went down to the very, very lowest, which has commercials, which we were watching. Karen and I were watching some movies and they what Paramount Plus does for movies is they give you like three or four minutes of commercials at the beginning of the movie. OK, and then nothing. It's just the movie after okay. that. And they so pop up a banner. They pop up a banner that says first a few ads and then you can enjoy an uninterrupted movie. And when I okay. saw that, I was like, yeah. yeah. So I can yeah. deal with that. I can deal with that yep. up front. Yep. You know, how long is it though? Is it more than two minutes or? 
It might have been three or four, but I mean, okay. fine. Because then yeah. you're watching a two plus hour movie with nothing. I, I yeah. loved it. Yeah, watching it straight through. I thought that was great. So, but those don't stay on all the time. Those two, um, the Chosen and the Church Dreams are free. Those two mm-hmm. don't stay on all the time. We turn them on and off depending on if Wyatt remembers to tell me to cancel when soccer season's over because I don't follow it. So, um, and then Paramount, like you said, it's got all the Star Treks. And uh, mm-hmm. I have struggled getting into this latest season of Strange New World. So I got to figure out if I'm going to get back into that or not. So, right, right. And then the last one is Sling. And this one, I usually only turn on for college football. So it's like, uh, September through December, through whatever the bowl games are. And it depends on who Utah is playing. I don't watch professional football. I watch college football. I'm a University of Utah fan. And it just depends on what stuff they're on. And one of the reasons I did Sling is because a lot of Utah's games were on the Pac-12 network. They won't be anymore. But they were on right. the Pac-12 network and they had an add-on. But this one was kind of expensive. I mean, it was 40, 40 or so dollars for the base. And then like 15 or $20 add-on for that Pac-12 channel and uh but i like this one because i can turn it off on and off so like if i could see that you know they were going to have three games in a row that were on fox i didn't bother Mm -hmm. right to turn this to turn this on i just figure out how to watch it otherwise um but also if it was they have two different packages and one one had espn and the other one had like fox sports and so if i could if i needed to switch in the middle of the month between the orange and the blue package i could Right. I just go in and say, change my subscription, switch it over. And yeah, they had to do their funky billing thing, credit you for the month and then charge it, right. you know, all that kind of stuff. But it worked out the same. But I like that I could switch that around. But I actually didn't use that one this year. I didn't watch. I watched a game on a couple of games on TV because they were on national broadcast. And mostly I listened to the games this yeah. season. So but this is the one that I turn on when I want to watch college football. So you don't have to turn on and off the entire service. You're just adding that package to it. The the college football package or if you had to add like a soccer package if you wanted to do that. Anything NBA, you want to do. Assuming there's a basketball. Yeah, okay. I mean you can okay. turn things on and off. Um and they have specialty things and all that kind of stuff. So you can kill everything. Or you okay. can and that's what I normally would do. I didn't like I said I didn't do it this year. Um but yeah. I mean normally what I would do is I would turn it on for the game if I knew I wanted to watch two or three, I would turn it on and immediately go in and cancel it after that. And they would mm-hmm. say, okay, your subscription will end on this date. That way I didn't forget to turn right. it off again. So, but they've, right. they have managed that the best, I think. So it's still there. We'll see next year when Utah's in the big 12, you know, yeah. what I end up doing with it. So. so before we move on though, let's go back to Amazon. Cause you say that's one that you would pay for. How much would you pay for that? Right, because if it was just the streaming services, right, we we're not talking about all the extra, the music, the uh, the shipping, the all the other perks, the Prime Gaming. They give you a lot of perks. What they give you some credits for Audible and this stuff every yeah. month. If it was just a streaming service, right, just a video, how much would you pay for that? Because I would, I, I think now that I think about it, I would do maybe nine or ten bucks a month. Yeah, definitely not fourteen. No, I think if they could keep it ten bucks or under, even if right. I mean, like with the freebie stuff, it has ads, right? Um, fine. Uh, but I think I would, I think I would pay 10 bucks a month for it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think I, I think I would do it around that, but thinking about the pricing now with all of the other benefits, I, I definitely, if it was less benefits other than the shipping outside of the shipping, um, I don't think it will be worth it for me. Yeah. So, okay. So, so that makes sense. Yeah. Before we go to devices, I think you kind of answered this. I could probably guess what it is, but if you could only afford to pay for two of your services, which two right. would you pay for? So it would be Amazon. Um, uh, Amazon because of the, the shipping and stuff, right? Put, put that aside. Assume it was just streaming. Assume it was just Amazon streaming service. So which okay, two? So if I had to pick, if I had to pick just two streaming services, right? Nothing else. Uh, I'm going to have to say Netflix and Disney Plus. Even though Disney Plus is not one that I pay for on a regular basis, and you know, I'm kind of torn too with Paramount Plus. So I would have to say Netflix, Netflix definitely, but between Paramount Plus and Disney Plus, I would have to say Disney Plus. Yeah. Those were, those were the two that I would stick with, considering that I don't have to pay for anything else. Yeah. I would, I would pay for those two. 
And see, oh, I would go. You? I would go with Definitely Disney, Disney Plus. Plus. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> I then that one was coming. I actually think Amazon would be the second one okay. on the list here because putting the free ones aside, right? Putting all that stuff yeah. aside, but not one. So the good. Disney Plus bundle or just Disney Plus? Um, the bundle too with Hulu and ESPN. No, I you... could do without. I mean, if it was like ten dollars cheaper a month to not have the bundle, I would do without. Hulu is good for TV shows, right? Yes. Lots of TV shows, but Amazon, I watch a lot of movies on, yeah. and then the freebie stuff, right? There's just so much in that back catalog of freebie, which is part of what's Apple TV Plus's problem, right? They just yeah. don't have yeah, definitely the problem. a back catalog. So unless you're into the style and the kind of stuff that they're putting out right now, mm-hmm. that's why I struggle using Amazon or Apple TV Plus, right? Is because they just don't have a breadth of stuff. It's what they've been producing. Now they're producing some amazing, right. amazing things, but anyway, yeah, for me, it would be Disney plus and then probably Amazon would be number two. Yeah. So no Netflix on that list. Wait, no. you don't have Netflix on your list at all. Nope. We had Netflix, but several years ago, maybe even a decade ago, we, we canceled it. Right. Right. Okay. Any reason why? Just not interested in the majority of the content that they make? I think it was just so much content. It was kind of like trying to find something to watch on cable. I mean, we used right. to You'll love... spend 30 minutes, 45 yeah. minutes looking for something to watch, yeah. let alone watching something. Yeah, I do miss being able to watch Arrow, The Flash, mm-hmm. Supergirl, and um, especially when... The one thing DC did really, really well, not to get off on a tangent here... Um, in my opinion, were the crossovers between those and uh, right. Legends of what were they called? Legends, Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, those yeah. crossovers were fantastic, especially the set where um, they had the evil Supergirl and the evil Arrow from the alternative unifor- universe, and they, you know, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, those crossovers were really, really, really good. Um, yeah. So, so we didn't, I guess before we move on to the devices too, we didn't talk about the stuff that we don't use, right? Because that WB or the uh, the DC yeah. uh, streaming service, fr- from everything that I've heard, it's really good, maybe a little overpriced, but still really good because you get everything that they get. Yeah. Minus the HBO stuff, I believe. Like, I don't think, um, like... You don't get the uh, what's the uh, the Doom Patrol and stuff like that. The uh, the Titans show, the yeah. stuff that HBO produces. So I think it's an Amazon and Netflix kind of thing. Uh, uh, I mean a Disney uh, Disney and Netflix kind of deal. So they don't get those shows, but from what I hear, it's pretty good. So yeah. are there any other streaming services that you can think of that you don't use that you say, well, maybe I should look into that? Yeah, I mean, people use YouTube for YouTube TV. That's a streaming service that's right. out there. It's got the right. NFL ticket now. I don't do that kind of stuff. The only other one I thought about several years ago was when all things Stargate was going to stream through its own stervi- yeah. service, and it basically would have given you access to the entire back catalog. But again, what I'm talking—that's where I think Hulu's where that SG One and Atlantis and stuff like that exist now. Because mm-hmm. um, so I don't think so. I mean, part of the problem for me is I don't want entertainment to consume my life um yeah i'm a i'm and i'm getting worse i'm a voracious reader too right mm-hmm. and so i don't want to get caught into a youtube you know two hours later i realize i've been watching youtube crap for two hours kind of thing same thing right. with just thumbing through netflix for example when i could be reading a really good book so right, right. so yeah so and I forgot to mention that too. This is a streaming service. You know, I, I look at it as, you know, just entertainment, even though these are entertainment, but I look at these as like subscriptions. But yeah, I would say 90% of my day, especially in the shop, is spent on YouTube. It is spent watching YouTube. Now, I'm not just looking at cat videos and, and dudes throwing footballs through basketball hoops at, you know, a mile, half a mile away. But, um, you know, I watch our show. I watch the podcast. Uh, I watch some true crime stuff. There's some some guys that come up. Um, and if I'm not watching that, uh, and I'll get into too what what I've been watching later, um, you know, in, in the post show. But if I'm not watching that, I'm just streaming music videos. Yeah. Right. I'll I'll play my music playlist on there, and it just it goes through. 
get a playlist and I have to skip, you know, ads and stuff from time to time. But yeah, YouTube is, is I would say would consume maybe 90% of my time during the day when yeah. I'm here in the, in the home, it's, it's one of these other services. So. Yeah. I mean, you've also yeah, got the you. kind You'll of, fall down that rabbit hole. you know, putting aside the podcast, you've also got the kind of work that lends itself to having something up and right. distracting right. you and see for me, it's put in my headphones and music and stuff like that. So, yeah. All right. Well, at the risk of making this go way, way longer than it needs to, let's just run through quickly what devices we use to stream. So um, I'm going to do mine fast because I think it is yeah. fast. And then you can talk about the variety that you have there. Um, first of all, for TV streaming, it's Apple TV. Uh, Wyatt's got one that he took with him. We have one on both of the TVs in the house. Um, my mom and my grandma have on their main TV, they have an Apple TV, but then we ended up giving them fire sticks or Amazon sticks, whatever yes. they were to go on their smaller TVs. Um, I don't personally use them. We did that for them cause they were cheap and they only needed them for the stuff that was there. Right. They didn't need it for right. the movie catalog, that other kind of stuff that you need the Apple TV for. So when it yeah. comes to TV, that's how I stream. How about you? Yeah. So it all depends on the quality that I'm watching. So you, you're right. I've used a variety of devices. At the bottom of my list would be those Fire Sticks, right? They work. They stream a good HD kind of standard quality video. Um, they do buffer pretty good, pretty decently. But um, yeah, that first, that entry level Fire Stick is probably the worst. No, I take that back. A Roku. <laughs> those yeah. Roku sticks were like a knockoff uh, Fire Stick. Not a knockoff because they're their own service, but that is absolutely the worst device that you can be buying is a Roku. Hey, let me Next ask you this. The... Let me pause on that. So mm -hmm. most TVs nowadays, and a lot of them are Roku, most right. TVs come internet connected. So in theory, you don't need right. any sort of streaming device. Do you, you connect don't. your Especially TVs to the new... internet at all? So I do. So and, and that's another thing. When I say depending on the content that I'm watching, if I'm going to watch a few YouTube videos and stuff like that, then yes, the the um, the TV, the apps built into the TV, whether it's TVOS or like you say, Roku, Google TV, those will work fine, right? But when you start getting into the HD content and all that, the wireless radio that they put in those are just a basic, you know, whatever the cheapest Wi-Fi right. radio that they can find. So the bandwidth on those things are not, the, the uh, throughput are, are not great, right? So when you start wanting to stream some 4K, some really HD, some HDR content like that, like I told you, those walking videos that I watch, those are all 4K, HDR, uh, the high dynamic range with all of the colors and the, like I said, you can see the dirt on the street and stuff. It's not really good for that. So that's why I have my my Xbox, my Series X that, that, you know, it connects to the 4K port. It streams like like perfectly. So I have some more powerful boxes along with the Apple TV too. Okay. So depending on the, the level of content that you want to enjoy, if you're just going to watch some cat videos, the Fire Stick is fine, right? You're going to watch some standard definition videos that are streaming on, on Amazon Prime. The Fire Stick is a good choice, right? They're inexpensive. I believe they were 17 bucks this past Friday, you know, Black Friday and, and uh, Cyber Monday. So don't let me discourage you from that. That is a really good choice, right? But if you really want to get into on Amazon Prime, you know, you watch some of these old James Bond. I'm a real big James Bond fan. Some of those videos, they have a 4K version of that. Not going to look as good as it looks streaming through a more powerful set-top box like an Apple TV or a um, Xbox or a PlayStation or something like that. So depending on the type of uh, uh, quality you want to get out of it, you know, like we always say, you get what you pay for. Yeah. Are you using out in the shop? Or are you just using the TV itself because you're basically just watching YouTube or? No, I have my Apple TV. Okay. And remember I told you because of the doorbell too. When, when we oh, get yeah, deliveries yeah, yeah, yeah. and shipments, uh, it Got pops it. up on the screen uh, no matter what I'm watching, whether it's YouTube or the podcast app or listening to music or something like that. Um, that's uh, uh, That's the main reason why I switched. Okay. But I had a fire stick out there at first and the, the connection and the bandwidth and the buffering and all that, because that's the farthest away from the from the router as as you can get. It's basically at the back fence line of a, of my property, yeah. and uh, yeah, I had to upgrade it to the Apple TV, okay. and it's been great. And see, I don't let my TVs touch the internet. I just don't trust the security. 
right. on them. So, um, but again, you've got a little better network set up and all that kind of stuff. I want just plug and play. And so I have to have a device right. connected to a TV and, you know, it's just for me because I buy everything at, through Apple. All my services are through Apple. It's just, yeah, it's just so much easier. So yeah. what about uh non TV? Do you stream on any of the other devices that you have? I mean, you talked about you use your Xbox and to stream to the TV, but what about tablets mm -hmm. or phones? How much streaming do you do on those? Right. So, uh, so of course, when I'm using my, and, and uh, it's funny because I tell my wife, like, I use my iPad like a VCR, right? I'm taking it with us on the cruise or whatever. And I load a bunch of the shows that we watch on it, and I just connect my HDMI uh, uh, hub to the TV on the cruise ship or in the hotel or wherever, like when we travel to Oklahoma and stuff. So, yeah, I I, um, I do store, but we're not streaming anything. I store it locally on okay. the uh, on the device. So Netflix has that great where you can download shows and stuff like that. Uh, we have it, – it's getting older now, a lot of older stuff because I hadn't been purchasing movies and stuff. We used to go on Black Friday. You know, you purchase a movie and you get the digital version. We hadn't done that in a couple of years. So a lot of the movies and shows are getting older. But, uh, yeah, I just pull them off of the hard drive, store them locally on the device, and just use it like an old-school VCR yeah. that I can carry around. It's this thin. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I do watch a lot on my iPad mini. It's just so right. convenient, right? I mean, even if I were sitting in here, I mean, I've got my Mac. I've got three monitors. I absolutely could throw up whatever I wanted on one of these three monitors, including this 4K yeah. portable monitor that I have. But if I'm in here, I'll just – but something I want to watch on my iPad mini usually right. I have considered cause I've got a wall up here. I could put a TV on that's been on my list, but again, if I'm going to move, then I'm not going to worry about it. So yeah, you um, don't have an extra device that you have to do something with. Nah. So, so you were just on a trip. Did you take anything with you to watch? Did yeah. you load anything on the iPad? I didn't load anything down because I had, you know, good internet. You had version. internet access. When I go yes. where I don't have internet, we do now. We thought we had loaded all of the kid shows onto their iPads, but they didn't get loaded mm -hmm. correctly. So that was a challenge, right? Yeah, and that's happened to me before too. Yeah. yeah. So um but yeah, I watch stuff on my iPad mini and I connected the mini up to the TV that's in the trailer to watch at least one of the shows and one of the movies I'll talk about in the post show. So Right. Okay, cool, cool. But yeah, yeah, a few uh... And that's pretty much it. Just those devices. I don't watch anything on the phone. I don't, I don't, that screen, even though it's a huge screen, it's a beautiful screen. I don't watch anything, including YouTube videos. You'll, you'll send me a link or my brothers will send me a link or something. I'll, I'll click on it or I'll look at the title, but usually I'll just wait till I get to my iPad and I'll look at it on the iPad or on, on one of the uh, screens here in the home. Yeah. I mean, every once in a while I'll do some stuff on my, phone just because the screen is so good especially when i have my headphones and and i mean yeah. this macbook that i have the screen is amazing i've you know tested it a little bit but yeah. i just when i'm working i'm working and again this is a tool for me right yeah. so well yeah, jason you. let's wrap up here i have a couple of tips that i want to share and then we'll see what you would do so from a streaming standpoint my biggest tips are is make sure you know what you're paying for Yes. Right. Um, check your card or your bank statements regularly. If you're, everything is through Apple, you can go into your Apple ID and go down to subscriptions and see um, just what you're paying for. Right. Because right. it's so easy to start one of these trials or to do something for a couple of months and then forget about it and realize you haven't watched it for three months and you've just spent, you know, 30, 45 bucks that you didn't need to. So that's my number one tip. And then my second tip, which both Jason and I have alluded to, which is check with your internet provider or your cell provider to see what they offer yes. for free or with a discount. Um, yeah, Verizon's new plans, right? yeah, Verizon's new plans are a mix and match kind of thing, and you can actually go in and turn on, on and off the perks. So you can, you know, pay for the Disney bundle this month, and if you don't want it the next month, you could go pay for something else. They even have a Walmart subscription or something different on there anyway they've got all these different things that you can turn on and off and basically better manage your cell phone bill so i would definitely recommend check with that stuff um see what they offer for free or with a discount because I, I, there's just very little we should be paying full price for when it comes to these streaming right. services right right so my tip is it's kind of similar um i would say 
make sure you're paying for what you need. You know, yeah, know, know what you're paying for, but pay for what you need, right? If you're single person, you know, you're just paying for it. There's no need to pay for four screens for like the, uh, I, I guess the pay for the tier. The tier, need, right? right? The yeah, tier yeah, of the exactly. service that pay you want. Yeah, yeah. Right. Don't don't pay for four up to four screens. A lot of these services, uh, they have just a single user kind of deal. And that's usually the cheapest one. Right. If you don't have a 4K TV, you don't need to pay for the 4K uh, yeah. HD. What do they call it? The ultra HD uh, uh, streaming level uh, right. a tier on on the uh, on the service. You know, what's the use of paying for it? It'll look really good on your 10, 1080p TV, but you don't really need it because you're not getting nowhere near the quality that you could be getting. Or so if you're watching no it on your to... phone, right? I mean, if right, you're, right. even if you it's the it 15 Pro Max and that's your only computing device and yeah. you've got Disney Plus or whatever it is, just pay for the standard definition stuff. Odds are on that screen, yeah. you're not going to tell a whole lot of a difference. Yeah, it's still going to look amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, just just be conscious of the tier and the amount of the, the amount of devices that you can use because a lot of these services, especially Netflix, they'll charge you for that, right? If you want four screens, they're going to charge you for four screens. If you only watch it on your phone, don't pay for the four screens. It it is cheaper. It is more cost effective to do it that way. So just be conscious of the tier that you're that you're in too. And a lot of them will have a trial, right? You'll start on that standard tier and they'll say, hey, you can do the HD format for a month or so, and you'll forget. And then instead of paying the 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 base price, you're actually paying you know seventeen bucks a month for HD that you're not using. So Always check that. Always make sure that you're paying for what you need, paying for the tier that you need. All right. I think that'll do it for today. Don't forget to do all the things. Check out the show notes. Um, we'll try and put some of the stuff in there. And, uh, you know, enjoy your streaming. I mean, entertainment is yes. there. Hopefully it doesn't consume your life and it doesn't become a problem. But enjoy what you do. I mean, I know my kids love the Disney stuff, which is why Disney would never be able to go away in our house <laughs> right. so um enjoy it but take in some of these tips share them with those that uh that can take advantage of it and look for those free opportunities so yeah. jason close us out what have you got this week then guys thanks for listening and we'll see you in the upside down that's a netflix stranger things reference nice <laughs> i was thinking maybe you would say remember when i told you not to cross the streams yes ray yeah. that would be really bad ray well, now we need to cross the streams, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, did you see the new trailer? No, I have not. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a good one. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, stick around if you want to know what we are watching on these services, and we'll have a little bit of conversation about that. And thanks for joining us today. Have a great one. Thanks, guys. Bye. All right. Well, thanks for sticking around. We talked about what streaming services we use, how we stream them, and uh, you get a little more insight into us. But I thought for the post show today, we just talk for a few minutes about some of the stuff that we um, have been streaming lately or is on our list to stream. And I'll just, Jason, I'll just kind of start through my list because some of this is going to overlap and I'm going to try and guilt trip you so we can actually talk about some of these shows right, that we've right. been waiting on. <laughs> but uh so the first one, and this was great that we had Paramount Plus. Thank you, Wyatt, for paying for it right now. But uh, a couple of weekends, two or three weekends ago, the kids went to visit um, some friends of my daughter. So it was just mm -hmm. Karen and I. And I was like, what are we going to do? And she's like, the possibilities are endless. And right. uh, what we ended up settling on, um, we actually did kind of a Mission Impossible binge. So I hadn't watched any of the Mission Impossible movies since the first one. Okay. And um, so then it took a few minutes to try and figure out which ones do we watch and what order do we watch them in and all that kind of stuff. And so we watched Ghost Protocol, mm -hmm. Fallout, and the one right before Fallout. Is it Rogue, was Rogue, it Rogue Nation. Agent? Rogue, Rogue Nation. Nation. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we watched those three. Which is probably three. the best one, I think. And I might have been mixing them up, but anyway, we watched that. And that's how I figured out what Paramount Plus does, right? Which is they give you those two or three minutes worth of ads at the beginning. And then you watch the show, even if you pause, right? It doesn't pop up a movie or an ad or anything when you come back from a pause and stuff. And so that was really good. I actually watched part of Fallout again while I was down on my little retreat thing down at the trailer. So mm -hmm. 
downside of the tier that we have there, because we have the commercial tier, because we just didn't need. I mean, for soccer, it doesn't matter because they don't interrupt right. soccer games the same way they do other stuff. But um, so yeah, so that was great to do that. So good movies. Um, I'm waiting for uh, Dead Reckoning Part One to hit Paramount Plus. It's not there yet. Okay. So we'll watch that one too when it comes out. So you mentioned how you binge Mission Impossible. So I do that too. I don't just binge shows at the end of the season. So the new Ghostbusters comes out. I watch all the Ghostbusters. You mentioned watching the um, uh, Indiana Jones. I'm going to go and binge. I'm going to start from the first one and watch all of them, the lead up to the... So I'll binge the movies too. Cool. So yeah, uh, so I'll, I'll be doing the same. Okay, so here's a little bit of a sidebar. I was living in Texas when all of the Harry Potter stuff was so big, right? And in mm-hmm. fact, I still remember my wife going and grabbing the last book for me. And I remember where I was when I read it and when I finally stopped to actually get a couple hours of sleep so I could finish it the next day. Right. Anyway, the movies were coming out and I had this idea to rent a theater for 24 hours. Okay. Just rent the whole theater for 24 hours and just play the Harry Potter movies from start to finish and end the right. seventh movie at, you know, 1159 PM. Right. So that we when can the new one, when start the eighth it. one the next day and charge people a ridiculous amount of money to come in and right. watch the shows. Right. That was my idea. Cause I thought that would be really, really cool. I actually did go back through and binge watched. Um, I skip a little bit. Right. Cause I don't have the patience to deal with the stuff I didn't like, but went through mm-hmm. and did all of the Harry Potters a couple of months ago kind of just right. watched them all in sequence because we actually have all of them. Um, so anyway, yeah, pretty cool. So the Santico uh, movie theater here and on Tomball, right? Down, oh, down to favorite theater down they'll there. They'll do that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they do that. They'll, you know, Batman comes out, they'll play all of the Batman. They'll, you know, Spider-Man comes out, you can go in and, and pay for one, two, and three and then watch the fourth one or something like that. Yeah. So they actually do that. That's cool. Uh, I started some Stargate stuff again, partially because when I want to go down and ride the indoor bike, I need, I do about a 45 minute ride. Mm-hmm. And so I need to pick a, an episode of something. Right? right. And so, and Stargate's not something Karen cares about at all. Right. So, um, so yeah, that's something that I can watch while Which I'm riding. SG one or. I grabbed a couple of SG one episodes. Atlantis is still my favorite. I'm just okay. <clears throat> Atlantis is all the way my yeah. favorite of all the series. So I wish they had not taken the writers away and put them on Universe because I didn't like. I right. know you liked Universe, but I did not. Yeah, so. it was it was really good, really good. I, I hate that it ended after what was it two, or three seasons. Yeah, that that really that had some real potential. Yeah. Uh, uh, recently wrapped up Ahsoka, which is guilt tripping you because I can't talk about it until you yeah. actually go in and watch it. It was really good. I won't spoil anything. Um, but what I liked about this is it didn't end with what you would assume it was going to end with. You know, the big everything has to turn out really well for the good guys and really bad for the bad guys, right? You assume okay. that it's going to end up that way and it didn't have this massive cliffhanger right so that's what i was going to ask you did it did it because you know these they're all supposed to be connected at yeah. some point right there because this is star wars right it's the star wars universe so they're supposed to be connected and they're building to that with these with these next few series that are coming up yeah so did it leave off not you're not going to have answers to something for another three years or did it end Okay, so it felt like a decent. It felt like a good spot, right? And you know, by cliffhanger, I mean that the, you know, the lightsaber is about to slice through the good guy, and they pause mm-hmm. it and say, "Tune in next season." That kind of stuff. No, they didn't do that. Okay, so but it also didn't end up with happily ever after kind of thing, right? So okay. I really enjoyed that, and the Mandalorian's done a little bit of that. Some of the seasons carried over into the next one, and you needed to go watch the beginning of the next one to catch on, but others didn't. Yeah, so. So yeah, Ahsoka's recent, Mandalorian, of course, all of that kind of stuff. Mandalorian and the book of Boba Fett, I thought was fantastic. Boba Fett was always my favorite Star Wars right. character. So, 
Um, these next two, though, are freebies. So I don't know if you okay. ever watched the original Leverage series. Um, if you didn't, you should watch that. And then you should watch Leverage Redemption, which is the follow-on series on okay. that. And That's James Spader, right? Is it James Spader? I believe that. Okay, Noah yeah, Wiley. A different show. Noah Wiley is in Redemption. Okay. Um, you know, uh, Carter from ER. So he's mm -hmm. in Redemption, but he was not in the original one. Um, the It's interesting on Freebie, a lot of these things cross like Noah Wiley's in the librarian series and the librarian movies, which are totally cheesy, but were pretty fun to watch. Um, but Elliot in leverage redemption is the muscle, right? He's the fighter. Yeah. And he's in this next series called almost paradise, which is also a freebie one. And these are ones Karen watches with me, Ahsoka even, but um, almost paradise is another freebie one. He's a retired from the DEA because he has some nervous issues and he's living in um, the Philippines and uh, getting sucked into, you know, trying to do, you know, trying to live his life in the Philippines and getting pulled into a bunch of stuff. Anyway, I mean, it's not the mm -hmm. highest end. It's none of that kind of stuff, right? None of these productions are. But anyway, I really like both of those series and those both come from Amazon Prime. Okay. So. Uh, Santa Claus is two is on my list. So I love the original Santa Claus movies. I didn't watch the one, um, with, uh, Jack Frost, Martin short. Yeah. Um, yes. I didn't watch that one, but I love the movies and the first season of the Santa Claus I thought was really good. Um, so that season two, it's dropped. It's on my list. I just haven't had a chance to watch it cause it's one Karen wants to watch with me. So, okay. and then these next two, I think are on Hulu and it's alone. And Mountain Man. And, um, you know, I'm a big outdoors guy. Um, yeah. And alone, they basically drop 10 people in this remote area miles away from each other. And you're he or she who lasts the longest wins the money. Right. Okay. They and have to find each other? or No, no. Just, they are not allowed to, to do that. So they just okay. have to survive. And so there's this whole thing about qualifying to be a part of it. And the one year they actually did, if you could go over a hundred days, you went half a million bucks and, or a million bucks, whatever it was, instead of the normal prize money to try mm -hmm. and get somebody to not just win, but to go the full hundred days. And because basically if you're the last one standing, as long as you make it one more night than the person before you, you win. And that okay. can be short. It could be long. Do you know when the other people drop? Or no, no, you do not. Okay. So you don't know if you're, if you're quitting first or nope. if you're 10 days past the last person. That, okay. Yeah. They, you won't be 10 days past the last person. Cause if, if it's not like that one season when they said you had to go a hundred to get the half a million bucks, that was a few days after the one before had dropped, but on all the rest of them, the next day they will tell you that you're done and let you pull okay. out. And a lot of times they'll fly a family member out there and surprise them at their camp. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. you're having to build shelter. You're having to figure out how to find food. The guy that won the last season that I watched, and I'm always a season behind because they are on TV, right? And then they come on to streaming a season later. But the last guy that won actually didn't even bother to try and do food, didn't bother to make a fire and maintain a fire. And those are two pretty calorie intensive things to do. He just basically, right. and he didn't bother to boil his water. Um, just drink the raw water straight from the river and laid in his shelter, you know, 24 seven, all that kind of stuff. And he ended up winning. Right. He's the first one that's ever done that. The, oh, he won. Yeah. Taking the easy route. <laughs> yeah. The guy that won the hundred days one uh, had a pretty nice shelter, but one of the reasons he won, um, they don't get a lot of big game. Um, okay. it's usually rabbits and squirrels and fish and that kind of stuff. Oh, you have but, to hunt your own. Oh yeah. You have to oh hunt. yeah. Okay. You got to build your own. Sh <laughs> you, you get 10 survival items and your clothing and your sleeping bag and that kind of stuff. And then, um, you build your own shelter. You got to find your own food, all that kind of stuff. And one guy killed a moose one year. He ended up winning almost didn't win because moose meat is so lean that he didn't right. have enough fat and they'll pull you out medically. Right. Okay. If you're yeah, yeah. lose so too much weight and stuff. Enough. But yeah. the guy that won that hundred day plus one killed a musk ox. And okay. uh he was out with what? Well, he one of his items he took was a bow. That's one of his survival items okay. that he took. 
and uh, you can't take a gun, but you can take a bow. But he was out hunting and only had a couple of arrows with him because usually they're hunting for grouse or stuff like that, small game. Yeah. And so he shot the muskox and ran out of arrows, and the thing wasn't dead. It was just right. standing so in the middle of a clearing. Out. And um, when it gets dark, the predators come out. And yeah. so he couldn't just let it stay there. So he was had his knife, and he was running in and stabbing the muskox and running away until yeah. it died. So, okay. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I love that like, show. How do you take out a muskox? Yeah. With one arrow. You yeah. have to just track it till it bleeds out. But yeah, yep. I guess he just went and stabbed them until he, okay. Yep. So anyway, that's that one we watched together. Like I said, it's always a season behind. And then we watched Mountain Men, which is more of a documentary on mm -hmm. folks that live off the grid. And they follow several families. Like this last season we watched, they followed uh, a mom and her daughter who were the dedicated hunters for a tribe in Alaska. And so they get the permits and they can go out and get as much big game as they can. And they bring that back in and they distribute it to the tribe. And, yeah. uh, but you know, one of them's a craftsman up in Montana. Anyway, it was really good. Those are shows that I watch with Karen. Those are on Hulu, I think. Okay. So, um, so super, super good. I used, we used to have discovery plus, um, we used to yeah. get it free and then that expired. So we turned it off, but then you could watch the more recent stuff on discovery plus. Cause that's where it usually is. Okay. You ever watch that show 30 below? Is it 30 below or 60? Yeah, similar below. thing, right? Where it's the yeah. people that live in below freezing. Yeah. 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 Same concept. I, 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 we like that. Uh, me, me and Wendy both watched that show. And then they had like a spinoff kind of season and, and all of that. So, yeah, we yeah. like that. You might like Alone or Mountain Men then. So. Okay. And then this last one I'll mention, Monarch Legacy of Monsters. So this is yeah. the first apple tv plus show that i've made it more than one episode in on right and it looks amazing it is really good i won't spoil anything but yeah i was talking it up so much i watched both episodes the first episode i watched in the hot tub while i was down in st george yeah. um recovering from a massive bike ride with a big spider um <laughs> but uh but um so I didn't know if Karen would like monster shows or not. And so she was asking me about it. And so she ended up watching the first two, the third one's out. The fourth one will drop tomorrow. Uh, I need to get caught back up on it, but it is really good so far. And it's jumping between time periods, right? It's yeah. jumping between the present and um, back when they were first trying to discover what these, what the radiation okay. readings were and all of this kind of stuff. And so it's jumping between these two time periods. Okay. And I understand in the third one, they actually show part of the 2014, whatever it was, one of the Godzilla movies. That was, just, my, that was going to be my question. Was there any crossover with them? They're with the showing movie? the scene from a different perspective, but you can tell that apparently that it's the same scene. Okay. And so, so yeah, so I'm really liking that show and of course the production value is just off yeah. the charts i was watching it on the crappy tv on my phone it was okay but it was small right and then right. i watched the second one on the crappy tv in the trailer because it's junk i'm excited to watch three and four on my 75 inch 4k right. but i yeah. got to make sure the kids are in bed because they won't do well but it isn't just the monsters showing up right they're talking about the science for how they were discovering them and tracking them and all of this okay. intrigue and secret organizations and all of that okay. kind of stuff. So yeah, I, I like it. So I hope the they don't from the monster verse. Yeah. I hope they don't turn it into something I won't watch. Right. <laughs> so I was, I, that was going to be my question. It was, was there any crossover? Because like I say, the show looks amazing. So being able to, to seamlessly integrate parts of the movie in the TV show, let you know how, you know, how good this show actually looks, yeah. you know, yeah. from, from a production standpoint. So it gets my approval so far. And there were others like, um, I'll just mention this one cause I ended up stopping watching it. So wheel of time by Robert Jordan is a book series. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like 14 or 16 books long and they just get longer each book. Yeah. And there are so many main characters that by the time you get like halfway through the series, 
you're having a hard time keeping track of main character threads. So Amazon bought the rights to it, similar to what they're mm-hmm. doing with the Tolkien. Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Tolkien stuff, so they yeah. bought it, and um, the production quality, I watched the first couple of episodes. Again, this is my favorite book series of all time. And they just turned it into something I couldn't watch. They pulled too much modern culture right. and modern stuff into it and tried to make it too edgy, in my opinion. I don't know if people will agree with that or not, but that's my opinion. And yeah. so I stopped watching it. And so I'm just here going, don't do this with Monarch Legacy of Monsters. Please don't do it with the Lord <laughs> of the Rings stuff when it comes out, because it's just like the Star Wars stuff. Whether you like the new Star Wars content or not, the production mm-hmm. value and the production quality yes. is so amazing. much better than the original Star Wars, right? Yeah. It just is. And so I just hope they don't. Don't ruin Monarch. It's right. good so far. Don't ruin some of these other shows I'm watching. The Star Wars stuff, I worry less about them pulling in the edgy stuff. They just don't do that, right? Oh, I did finally watch uh, – what's the other one um, that everybody said was so good for Star Wars? Um, Andor. Andor. That one, yes. yeah. Yeah. So I did get that one in. I, okay. I did squeeze that one in, and it was really good. Yeah, that was yeah. really good. It took I, me a minute I, to get into it, but – so I don't like the fact that Rogue One killed these characters off, right? Yeah. Killed, killed, uh, uh, killed Cassian and Andor off because now I want more. So now even if they do a second season, which I believe they are, it's still a prequel to Rogue One, Yeah. right? I, I want to see them build this character well beyond that. Yeah. Now you can't. You know, they can go in and be like, oh, they were beamed up by are we gonna have no a, technology. And, are we going to have a Star Wars program. multiverse? Yeah, yeah, something weird like that. No, they shouldn't have killed that character off. I don't think they realized how lovable this guy was going to be as a as a Star yeah. Wars character. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I did squeeze that one in. It is really good. Did you like it? Yeah. Yeah. That, that was so, you know, the thing is, and I want you to take some time here too, but the thing is, I like the Star Wars stuff because it's pretty safe, right? right. I don't have to worry about over-the-top language or over-the-top scenes or things that don't need to be there that I, right. I don't enjoy, right? And I'm like, not judging like anybody. Star Trek shows. Yeah, I'm not judging anybody. Star Trek went in that direction. I mean, Star right. Trek was not like that, but they they went in that direction. And so the wheel of time, what they did with that, there were hints of it in the book. Mm-hmm. That was not how the book was. Right. They didn't, they didn't play out like they did right. on the show. Right. So anyway, so that's why star Wars is pretty safe. That's why most of what Disney does is safe. Now they own Fox and you know, they've got some edgier stuff and yeah. you know they're gonna merge Hulu straight into the Disney app. That's something that they've okay, announced. Good. And so, because they bought out the rest of it from Comcast, so there'll be they'll be they own own it. So okay. they're gonna merge that in. So you I got a little that. bit that's of good. that, but um, yeah. Anyway, all right. So talk to that's us. coming next year. The mer- the merger? Uh, no, later this that year. I think line? they've already beta tested it. They've already got some beta okay. testing out, so it's coming soon. Okay, so Hulu yeah. is not going to be Hulu. It's just going to be Disney yeah. Plus. That yep. Hulu is going away. Okay, yep. good. Good way. Good way to kind of streamline things. We talk about yeah. so many different offerings. It's confusing sometimes. So, okay. So here's my list. I I, I wish I I should have went first because I really don't have much. You know, like I tell you all the time, uh, I don't have time to watch some of the shows that I want to watch. So definitely at the top of my list is is Star Trek: Strange New Worlds. That is. Uh, the most Star Trek of all of the Star Trek series that I've seen in years, right? Yeah. Really love it. Really love it. Hadn't started season two, left off with season one, one and more, and just hadn't got around to it. The thing with number two on the list is Picard, right? Left season, left season two, one and more. And uh, when I finally got it, just never got around to it. Um, but yeah, everything Star Trek, um, I, I love it. That That's going to be the top. Um I hadn't watched the the Secret Wars with uh, Nick Fury, the Nick Fury show. Oh, that uh, was the good. Marvel show. That was good. Yeah, yeah. My son keeps telling me he's like, "You need to watch it. You need to watch it." And I, I watch it. You know, they get ready for Christmas break. Of course, I'll re- renew the Disney Plus, and I can I can get all of those in. 
Um, Paramount Plus, Beavis and Butthead. I know we, you know, <laughs> you don't listen to, you know, like stuff like that, but uh, that that's on my list too. Uh, when I get my my Paramount Plus, oh, also uh, Star Trek, uh, not Star Trek, South Park has a new um, has a new special too, and it's one of those shows like Beavis and Butthead, totally inappropriate. Uh, I, I don't let anyone watch it but me <laughs> when when I'm here in the room late at night. But uh, those are on my list. So things that I have been watching um is um so i i love like of, of course we cruise and stuff a lot too but not only that i love hearing stories about these old cruise ships and things like that so sort of in the same vein of like um uh, true crime uh stories and, and stuff like that where they talk about different you know events and 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 murders and things like that that happen uh i've been watching a couple of youtube channels specialized in stories about these old cruise ships that sunk, or not necessarily cruise ships, but just any kind of vessels, period, that sunk, whether it was in World War II, you know, the hood, the, um, um, a lot of the, uh, the, the Japanese, uh, carriers and stuff, they got, uh, they get, they got sank. They, um, they actually tie in the story with actual footage and stuff of, of divers going down and seeing these wrecks and stuff. Of course, the Titanic is one of the most famous ones, you know, the Lusitania, the, the Britannic and things like that. So here are these old stories. Uh, Andrea Dora was, uh, you know, another uh, really popular ship that 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 sank. That um, uh, so I've been watching a lot of those. Um, uh, and these guys, they really they really put an effort into making these these videos as good as they can make them. They're like regular documentaries, 25, 40 minutes or so, depending on the length of the story. They add in a lot of details. Um, there's a ship in uh, the second episode of Monarch. Okay. It's a sunken ship that, okay. It's not sunk anymore. I don't want to spoil too much, but it did go down <laughs> as, right? Uh, it went down with Pearl Harbor. Um, okay. But it comes into play, so. All right. Yeah, yeah. See, uh, I love stuff like that. So I've been watching that lately as a kind of end of the day, because my day is like, you know, it, it's full. If, if I'm not running, getting supplies or, or setting someone up at a, at an event or a market or something like that. Uh, so just at the end of the night, kind of, it's usually the last thing I usually wake up, you know, 30 minutes or 40 minutes into it and turn the TV off. Cause I realized that I dozed off on it. So it's usually the last thing I watch in the evening. I watch that and I watch those walking videos that I recommend. Yeah. Right. Some of these uh, tourist areas and stuff that, uh, uh, you know, seeing these guys walk around the streets to Japan, it's just so, it, it just puts me at ease at, at night. It just, you know, it helps me relax and, and I can fall asleep a lot easier. So, and both of those are on YouTube, right? I watch a lot of cops and, and uh, those old episodes of cops, you know, weird. I just, <laughs> I watch that. So it's weird because like, uh, uh, Wendy, she'll be in the shop working with me and like, an episode of cops uh, uh, go off and, and, you know, it's playing the music, the bad boys, bad boys. So it has the little theme song. Then it'll go off and it may play a commercial. Then you'll hear, welcome to Leaders Lift. And, and you know, that's like the next thing. So it, it falls into like the order. And then you'll hear, uh, you know, a music video will pop up or, or, or something like that. And then it'll go back to cops. And then the next thing, welcome to Gadgets for Families. You know, thank you, <laughs> you know. And, and and the same thing with C Ned and, and you know Brian Tong, a few other guys that we listen to, uh uh, uh Brandon Butch and stuff like that. It like all mixes in. So like right, I'll go in the shop, I'll hit play and and I'm just getting all of this different information through th throughout the day. It's it's kind of crazy. So but uh that's pretty much it. Like I said, maybe I should have went first because it, it was pretty short for me. You know, I have some things that I want to watch, but the main things that I get to watch, that's some of the things that I get to watch. That is some true crime stuff, too. I, I look at a lot of, uh, um, there's uh, some ladies that actually bought popcorn from me at an event. They have a true crime podcast where they talk about crimes that happen in Houston. So I listen to them. I, I, I tune in to, 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 to those ladies. And uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. You know, just a past customer. They recommended their show. This was way before you and I started recording. But uh I listen to those and just a kind of a Houston kind of twist on a true crime kind of genre. Cool. Yeah. Really cool stuff. Well, you know, so for those of you listening, one of the ideas Jason and I have had is to do some bonus content where we talk about some of these shows and maybe a little more depth yeah. or 
some of the more pop culture stuff. So that if that's something you're interested in, go into the show notes, hit the heat feedback form, let us know, you know, if there's one of these shows we've talked about that you'd like to us to hear more and I can force Jason to watch, you know, Ahsoka or Secret, right? Whatever the even Nick if I Fury can get a couple was. of episodes, yeah, yeah, a couple of episodes in, I will do that at least. Yeah. So let us know on that. I uh, hope you enjoyed today's show. Uh, let us know what you're streaming. If there's anything you think we would like to uh, check it out, I'm always in the market for that. And we are going into, for me at least, right. I'm in the slower time. Jason's in the busier time, but. Uh, there will definitely be some streaming time for me over the next month or so. And then I'll get busy yeah. in January. Jason will slow down a little bit. So we'll see how that right. all works out. So, all right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Have a great day. Yep. See you next week, guys.